what's up y'all it's sarissa today i'm going to show y'all uh recent that i did the tip application shaping and acrylic application um this video is going to be sped up but this part i wanted to leave real time because i wanted to talk to y'all about um applying tips on crooked nails now if you've watched some of my other videos you already know how i feel about crooked nails um i feel like if the nail itself is just slightly crooked and there's a way for you to apply the tip to where it seems not crooked, then go ahead. But if the nail is extremely crooked or if the finger is extremely crooked, um, and when I say extremely, I don't literally mean it's pointing the completely opposite direction, but to the point where you can tell, you know, like with my clients here, if I were to put this tip on going exactly straight like the other fingers it would just look it would look crookeder than it already is um and technically it's not even crooked her the finger is just crooked so i just wanted to show y'all how i apply tips to crooked fingers and like i said if it's the nail that's just slightly crooked and you can kind of finesse it then go ahead but advice from me to you if it's extremely crooked or if the finger itself is crooked just go ahead and put it with the nail but um always just ask your client do you want to put the nail with your nail going kind of crooked or would you prefer me to quote unquote straighten it out going against the nail um and it's pretty much just up to them but like i said on this client um she told me to just do whatever i think looks best and because it's her actual finger that's pretty crooked i went ahead and put it with the nail itself um yeah so you're just going to see me apply tips here. Uh, these are actually some tips I got off of AliExpress. Um, I'm going to try them out before I plug them. But so far, y'all, I actually really like them. And of course, they are coming from China. So it, it does take a little bit longer to get here. But it really didn't take that long. I think it maybe took like two weeks. I'm going to um, look back and see. But uh. I actually really like them though. Now, one thing I will say is sometimes they do have trouble sticking, um, which is work aroundable if you work with tips like this often. But if you don't, just to present, just to prevent yourself the trouble, go ahead and get a um, get your sanding band and just rough up, rough up the inside of the nail before you even apply glue anywhere. That way, it'll be a little rougher. It'll have a little bit more, you know, friction to stick to. And then you can go in with your glue and it should be fine, uh, the application wise. But, um, I really like them. They're thin. They're not too bulky. They're not too wide. Yeah, I, I like them, but I'm going to test them out, make sure they're not, you know, easily breakable, whatever, whatever. And then I'll start plugging them, but I don't even want to waste y'all's time, you know, ordering something from AliExpress, paying for shipping. And then they get here and they're not even worth the trouble, but I'm not going to lie y'all so far they're nice um they're comparable to tulips extra long flattened tips uh i do prefer these so far because of how thin they are and they're not wide at all like you literally could go in sometimes without even shaping the uh the sidewalls and you will literally be fine um of course coming later and you know touching the side walls up but you could literally just jump straight into it if you wanted to now me myself and i i always hit the side walls just out of habit even if it doesn't really need it so you're gonna see me go in and hit the side walls a little bit um rough up the uh you know where the free edge where the free edge meets um the tip well blend that in um Y'all let me know how y'all feel about this step right here. I know a lot of people feel like it's not necessary slash just kind of a waste of time. I like this little extra step because I feel like it just helps blend everything in. But y'all let me know if y'all take the time to do this. And right there, I was just making sure that all of the tips were the same size. Just go 
cuticle to cuticle, end of tip to end of tip to make sure they're the same size. You got to keep in mind, some people's nail beds are different lengths. So cuticle to cuticle, tip to tip, make sure they're lined up correctly. Then I just go in priming twice with my Mia Secret Primer. And right here I'm going in with um, Young Nails Cover Pink. This is my go-to cover pink. I use it for 95% of ombres. It's always my go-to base color for like most of my art Frenches. The only other color I really just fool with is um, Bad and Bougie by Valentino. It's more of a pinky undertone. That's normally my second go-to as far as like nude colors. But go-to for everybody. I'm talking about looks good on everybody's skin. A neutral nude for any type of base. Goes well with any color. Is this Young Nails Cover Pink. Now... Some of my nail tech sisters have tried like Cover Flamingo and they like it. Um, I actually think they like it better if I'm not mistaken. Um, but I, I myself have never tried it, but I've seen them do it. I might have used one of theirs before. I, I don't know. I can't remember. But um, that's definitely a good color. I've seen it in person. I just have never used it myself. Uh, I don't know why. I just have always stuck with my um Cover Pink. I'm a big creature of habit. Once I find something that works, I tend to just stick with it. But... If you are looking for something that's a little more pinky, definitely try um, Young Nails Cover Flamingo. So anyway, right here you're just seeing me do my um, French. Now, I don't know if I've said this in a video before, but I actually prefer to do polished Frenches. But depending on what color the client wants, sometimes I will go ahead and do an acrylic French. This French... Um, Right there, I was just making sure both the nudes are equal. But back to what I was saying, this French, I did acrylic because my other nails need to match the middle two exactly. I didn't feel like mixing up no polish to match this color because it's a very unique color, I feel like. At least considering what polishes I have because I don't have a ton of polishes. Um... Me and my coworkers all mainly use acrylic, so we don't just have a million polishes laying around. And well, I we do have a lot of polish, but the time it would have took to mix, I just was like, yeah, no, I just do it in acrylic. But I actually prefer polished fringes. I think it's just neater. It's more foolproof because, like the poly, the process of doing acrylic French, you have to worry about. Is this enough nude? Am I putting the nude low enough? Am I putting it high enough? Is this enough acrylic at the tip? Do I need to cap it? Polish, you can literally just do your foundation and put that polish on. The most thing you'll have to worry about with polish is if you have a client that is kind of rough-handed, you might not want to do that because they might have problems with chipping. And just making sure the color is opaque enough to where you don't have to do a million coats for it to, you know. But like I said, in that case, if it was a color that was kind of weird, I would probably just go ahead and get the acrylic version. And that way I wouldn't have to worry about it. And you know, there there is something very satisfying about doing an acrylic French and revealing the smile line. But <sighs> polished French has, yeah, it's... It's converting me over, <laughs> definitely. This color, y'all, is by um, a nail tech. I can't think of her name. But she does not sell this color anymore. Not to my knowledge, anyway. Um, a very, very pretty mint green. And it actually lays very nice. Um, but, yeah, she doesn't sell it anymore. Because I was actually going to go buy it again one day. And it wasn't there. So, yeah.
this part is actually my favorite application part. Um, I had posted a clip on Instagram that people really liked. The freaking lighting in this video on this part is like top tier. I know for a fact the next time I record a video, I'm definitely going to do it the way I did this one. Because just that extra bit of light I put in this video is it's a big, big difference versus just using my one ring light. Um, yeah, this is definitely my favorite finger. Now, this part is not my favorite. Uh, I picked up too small of a bead for that cuticle area, so I had to go back in with another bead. That was a fail, <laughs> but it's okay though, because I fixed it. Now, that definitely looks more satisfying. This, I'm telling y'all, this color like, is so nice. Uh, I actually don't even know if she even still sells acrylics, because the time I did go to look was a while back, like a while back. Um, and I hardly see anybody's post anymore because of Instagram's algorithm. So I have no idea if she's even still selling colors. But, um, anyway, going in with this last cuticle bit to, uh, cuticle bit, cuticle bead, well, really it's an apex bead. Last bead to build up the apex and give it, you know, a little bit more structure and thickness. And then we're going to move on. So, as y'all can tell, I'm just going in with my file to round up my little oval. Make sure that's nice and crisp so that way when I, you know, file away my green, that nice crisp line will show up. I've seen some people, tell me how y'all feel about this. I've seen some people that they'll do that part or whatever, but then they go in on the top and file the top. And I'm sure it's just to go ahead and get it, you know kind of laid right before they apply the green in this instance but i wonder like what is the exact reason for filing the nude before you lay your color i'm assuming it would be just to get it smooth so that way it's an even cleaner reveal versus having to like you know go in and, and fix all that but i don't know T tell me you know if y'all know why drop it in the comments Cause I've been wondering that. I, I see some nail techs do that. I need to try it one day. But um, something that I was thinking about during this whole set is like, for one, it always takes longer doing nails while you're recording. But honestly, y'all, I really want to find a different way to record, at least like a different setup, because there are so many things that are like rookie mistakes almost that I will do while filming because it's so hard to try to do nails and see at the same time. Like even with my hand, my hand keeps getting all in the frame. I'm telling y'all something about trying to film and do nails at the same time is so much stuff you will do that I wouldn't have done if I wouldn't have been recording because even with like the speed, I'm way faster when I'm not recording and like certain angles, you'll think you're getting it, but you watch it back and you're not. And like, my hand keeps getting in the way like but see with nails most of the time you're holding the finger down so you know gravity will work with you so it's like how can I record and it be like a front point of view but not get my hands in the way I'm gonna try some different some different ways I might just have to do a little side view on the slick kind of on the side kind of up front so that way my hand is not getting in the way as much um, I almost wish I could tie down GoPro to my forehead because I hate when my hand gets in the way. But anyway, we're finally towards the end almost, um, just going in with my drill. I got this bit off of Amazon. I got the drill from Amazon. Also, I, y'all, if you are somebody who's looking for a drill, now I haven't had this drill for no more than a month, but I'm telling y'all for 40 damn dollars. This drill is lit. Like, 
It's lightweight as hell. This is the lightest drill I have ever had. It like automatically pauses. So when I'm when I'm drilling, right? Okay, let me just put it like this. All my Melody Susie drills that I've had, you're not supposed to change the bit while it's still running. Like how that how that drill is running right now, I had developed a bad habit of just twisting the lock thing. And you know, that obviously stops it and then just pull the bit out, switch it, put another bit in and then turn the lock back on and then the driller just keeps running like i never stopped it i never turned the the speed down i just switched the bit out well apparently that messes up your drill well this drill which i have been trying to stop that habit altogether but this drill like automatically pauses so if i'm drilling right and i do my lock when i turn the lock back on i'm probably confusing the hell out of y'all okay when i twist the handpiece to unlock it and let the drill slide out the drill bit slide out when i put another drill bit back in and i lock the drill piece back it doesn't just keep going because it paused like as soon as it felt any type of changing or the drill bit coming out any of that it paused so and it's the same thing even with like when you click the reverse of the or the forward. Now it doesn't pause all the way, it just pauses for a couple of seconds. But it like I don't know, it's just very I have never had a drill that, that does all this and like the the interface that it has is digital. So you can see, you know, the RPMs of course, you can see the battery, all that. You can see if it's on pause or play you can see if it's on reverse or forward like it's just very high tech for it to be forty dollars now like i said it's only been a month so i don't know how long it's gonna last me but for forty damn dollars i'll take that because all of my melody susie drills i spent 80 and it lasted me no more than five or six months and i actually had to email them um i bought my last drill and they issued me a refund which i was appreciative of but i was just like dang that freaking purple drill that everybody had that was my first drill ever um it lasted me for at least a year and a half solid um slick two years because even even when i threw it away it still was working i just didn't want to use that drill knowing that it had a cord or whatever um but i literally i've had three melody susies within a year and a half so for twice the price yeah, I'm going to need it to last a little bit longer than six months. But I will say we are using the drill day in and day out, um, dropping it sometimes, not taking care of it the complete best. So, you know, I'm not completely mad about it. But just, you know, if y'all are looking for a drill that's very lightweight, it's not too, too strong. Because, see, when I first started, I thought I needed a strong-ass drill. But in reality, if, you're, if your foundation is pretty good, you shouldn't need to go and drill a bunch of shit. Now, of course, you're going to need to drill stuff like the French nails, but you need to get to the point where your foundation is good enough to where you're not having to use a damn 60 RPM drill, 60,000 RPM drill just to get your foundation good. You know what I'm saying? So this is perfect for me because me being a more advanced nail tech, I don't need a super extremely strong drill. I prefer a drill that's more on the lighter side quieter less vibrations because that's easier on the client's nail bed it ain't vibrating all on their nail bed and stuff um definitely hadn't had any problems with like rings of fire or anything like that it's just very lightweight like i love it and it's 40 dollars on amazon so uh i'll drop that below but yeah y'all um you're just gonna see me here go in with my file to make sure that my smile lines are good um and just some finishing touches on the shaping and that's pretty much it i actually was going to record this whole entire set um y'all can go see it on instagram if you want to see it but the croc print that i did on top was slick tedious it wasn't tedious but i had to do a lot of back and forth because she wanted the green glossy but the black matte and so i literally had completely forgot about the fact i was even recording that's one of the biggest things about recording is remembering every part 
or at least most of the parts you know the good parts but anyway, that's this it, you guys. I just wanted to show y'all some application and drilling. Check that apex out. Check them sidewalls out. Very clean and nice and pristine. And I'm just going back in, perfecting that smile line, of course, because I am <laughs> OCD. And yeah, that's it, y'all. Um, I will see y'all again soon. Stay tuned for another video. Y'all, look at them nails. Just look at them.